First, they built roads and railways, infrastructure to dominate. Then they drew lines. Lines became borders and fences. The people were crossed by borders. Borders turned people into nations and tribes into ethnic groups. Rails and fences are two symbols of modernity, of the modern world, of the world of colonization. Railways to connect and facilitate a certain kind of mobility, barbed wire fences to stop, to regulate, to delay other kinds of mobility. Railways and barbed wires sounds oppos uh, opposing couple, but in fact they, are, they belong to the same logic of domination. Mobility of a part is only possible when other parts are immobilized. Railways and barbed wire fences are, were both invented in the 19th century. Both played crucial role in the expansion of capitalist mode of production for industrialization and for military ex expansions. Perhaps the symbiosis of railways and barbed wire is best shown in the um, image of the Jews packed in the cattle train car covered by barbed uh, wire on the way to our death camp. Barbed wire was invented by an American farmer 18 73, first it was used to restrain cattle and then American native tribes. Later on, it was used in military and political management of spaces during the First and Second World Wars, and today to close the borders in the face of migrants. Both railways and barbed wire fences have been used in configuration of colonialized spaces. Railways, like barbed wires, have been tools of invasion, invasions, oppressions, and genocides. There are many examples from North America to Australia. The Berlin-Baghdad railways played a crucial role uh, in the Armenian genocide, 1915-1916. Armenians were sent to, on trains to death, and train stations were turned into concentration camps. Between the fall to, to 20, um, 2015 and the summer 2016, the Berlin-Baghdad railways partly came in use once again, not by trains, but by people, travelers without papers, crossing borders on foot from Turkey to Greece to Macedonia, Serbia, Hungary, Austria, and Germany. When there is no infrastructure, people become infrastructure themselves. Rails became guide that would reduce the need of smugglers and brokers. Parts of the colonial infrastructure was turned into the sort of under underground railroads for refugees. And the ground railroads roads was a complex network of secret routes in the mid 19th century for helping African Americans to escape from slavery to Canada. The metaphor of underground railroads is useful in this context since refugees are supposed to be fenced, not on rails. Rails and fences function together in order to commodify mobility. Mobility is valuable when access to it is limited and regulated. Well, some can travel on trains, others should be stationed. Those, without, those with a surplus of mobility right cross borders gloriously as an honorable act in the spirit of globalism and cosmopolitanism. Those without papers do it through invisibilizing themselves. They move in dark and shadow. They do not go through gates, they go through cracks. They do not pass through borders, they jump over walls. They crawl and the barbed fire fences. The former group sit on seats in train cars. The latter hide themselves and the trains.
We should put it correctly. They are not invisible, but invisible. They are actively unseen. Socrates said, a thing is not seen because it is invisible, but on the contrary, it is visible because it is seen. We can say, the traveler without paper is not unseen because she's invisible. On the contrary, she is invisible because she's unseen. The media representation of so-called refugee crisis along the European borders show large number of people squeezed in train cars or in abandoned train stations along the railways in the Balkans. The images show constant presence of trains and stations packed with denamed and defaced racialized bodies of refugees, a mass, a mob, a package of bodies representing threat, labeled fluids, waves, swarms, crises. In the professional cartographies of so-called refugee crises, arrows have replaced human faces. Used on maps, arrows visualize the movement of people Thicker ones from, the Africa, from Africa and the Middle East, depicting security threats. Maps showing the movements of people along the rails from Syria and Turkey to Germany or other European countries. Display arrows penetrate countries from outside. Outcomes of arrows cannot be else than damage. Individuals are reduced to categories called refugees, illegal migrants, asylum seekers, economic migrants. They are turned into numbers in media news and official reports or arrows on maps. The refugees did not only walk along the rails, they lived the life along the rails. When not walking, they raised tents, they occupied train stations, they shared food, shoes, news, information with each other. They built an infrastructure for themselves. An interesting feature of refugees' movement is that their practices cause a disruption of the public-private dichotomy. They turn train stations into bedroom, train platform into living rooms, abandoned uh, train cars into kitchen and prayer rooms, and walls into notebooks for messages and signs. All over places they have passed through, left, they left traces of themselves. Well, graffiti are linked to art and slogans on wall regarded as part of political movements. There are other forms of writing on walls that are not easily classified. One, for is, one form is living a, uh, living a trace. Among refugees, there is a form of putting one's mark on uh, walls. They put their names and dates, sometimes followed by a short notice, a message confirming their presence. They put their dreams, both night dreams and daydreams, and their pains on the walls. Sometimes on walls, in camps, and abandoned places, there are appeals incorporating names and traces, missing family members or friends and routes between one and another border. To leave a trace is a lack of place. Lines and words put on walls by refugees record their presence and leave a message to be read in time to come, as we do it now. Leaving a trace as well as a scribbling on walls challenge the system of signs and produce a new, a new one. Through imprinting their traces on walls, they intervene in the public place spaces. The refugees earn visibility and resisting being unseen. A scribbling on walls, even though they are empty and meaningless signs, is related to refugees' protracted way to confronting with boredom and desperation. Well, rails are for mobility, stations are for immobility. The word station means to stand and to be fixed. 
Gare du Nord in Paris, Kelty Station in Budapest, Belgrade train station, or Idomeni train station on Greece, Macedonia border are where refugees have been stationed, stuck in prolonged waiting between one border and next one. Waiting is a particular experience of time. It is a manipulation of other times. Waiting is expecting something com coming from others. Waiting is a way of experiencing the effect of power. Waiting is usually something for the less powerful groups in society. A consequence of waiting is the feeling that one is not fully in command of one's life. While well, stationed and stuck in waiting along the rails, they have been watching trains and passengers move in and move out according to timetables. What does days, weeks, weekends for mean for people who have been waiting in years, in decades? How is the life temporally structured for those who have had no timetable for years, for decades? As a consequence of modernity, time has been commodified. In modern societies, people approach time in terms of how it most efficiently can be used. Time is associated with success and money. It is presented as a form of capital, which similar to money can be counted, saved, spent, lost, wasted, or invested. Therefore, waiting symbolizes waste, emptiness, and uselessness. Well, stuck in train stations, watching others having right to mobility, make refugees to deem that their own time and thereby their social worth is less valuable than time and worth of others. According to the hierarchy of mobility regime, refugees should not be allowed to move as men and women with right of mobility. The meaning of distance was changed forever by the invention of railways. However, the new perception of distance or closeness has not been distributed equally for all. Barbed wire fences are used to maintain this inequality. Borders do not stop refugees, but delay them, make them dispossessed of time. The journey from Milan to Rome by train takes several hours for Hamid. It took two weeks since he was stopped, controlled, forced to get down many times. The distance between Greece and Turkey border and Komotini, a small Greek town, is about 100 kilometers, one hour by car. Ahmed walked that distance 16 times and was deported 15 times back to Turkey, 2001. For Muhammad, the journey from Athens to Berlin took two years. He was delayed all the time, stuck for months at train stations in Greece um, and other countries towards Berlin. Stuck in prolonged waiting and constantly exposed to delaying engendered the feeling of not being in time with others, not being in sync with others. This is perhaps part of the legal production of refugees. The border regime produce, produces refugees as a particular mood of being in the world, partly through manipulation of their time, keeping them in prolonged waiting and constantly making them delay and slow, down, slow them down, resulting in a feeling of being outside the normal social life resulting in a feeling of losing of social function. On September the 2nd uh, of September 2015, a short video clip circulated on the social media showing a Syrian father throwing first his wife and his baby um, and their baby on the rails and then himself on track, uh, rail tracks in the Hungarian town of uh, Bikseke. Um, rather than a perplexity or an emotional reaction to the horrible scenes he has witnessed along the European borders, throwing himself and his family on the rail tracks was a significant political action by a willful subject. 
A willful subject, as Sara Ahmad puts it, is a striking body who aims to disturb the order by becoming an obstruction. Ahmed describes willfulness as the will of those bodies that obstruct the fellow of the general will of a whole by literally pull their body on the way. They turn the bodies into blockage. The refugee family on the rails became political force to block a regime of mobility that does not include them. The refugees, the refugees march throughout Europe has been identified as a crisis. They are usually represented individuals without agency, lacking any kind of choice or option. They are victims of socio-political structure that turn them into a particular type and role, refugees. They are a crisis because when delayed and stopped by fences, they become audible. They want to be heard, they want to be seen. Refusing being docile and submissive individual, they embody the willful subject. In September 2015, the Hungarian um, uh, authority closed the Keleti train station and stopped refugees to board trains toward Germany. Refugees protested. When the police tried to move them from station to camps, the protests became intense. Refugees wrote on walls, open borders, and started chanting, freedom, freedom. The word movement means both the act of moving, changing of place, but also an organized activity that challenges existing structures and aims towards social changes. Large number of refugees walking on roads along the rails or through the fields and forests resemble a political march. Refugees' movement in both meaning of the word produce the subjectivity through the action of politics, challenging the border regime and the order of things. What was before individual journey now became a collective project, walking together. They became a collective movement. Tony Jatt, in an essay um, a few years ago, wrote about the significance of railways for the emergence of the modern life. He wrote that railways were a, a collective project and have played a crucial role in making of collective life and making it possible and therefore uh, uh, also played a central role in emergence of civil society. The social movement of refugees will come in all main train stations throughout Europe, European countries, brought back the idea of a collective political life and a shared public space back to the train stations, which otherwise have been depoliticized and dehistoricized, reduced to a non-place in Marc Auger's term, used more as a passage, a corridor, or a place for consumption. Marching refugees along the rails and through train stations politicize a public space that has for a long time been depoliticized. A willful subject, as willful subjects, refugees chanting freedom and openness link the oppressive fences in Budapest to the oppressive fences in Damascus in Istanbul, in Tehran, or anywhere in the West Bank. This image could be from anywhere in the Middle East. They linked the struggle for infita, Arabic word for openness, or azadi, Persian word for freedom, in their country of origin, to the openness and freedom in Europe. Rather than agency-less refugees, they are willful subjects who brought back private into public, 
who denaturalized otherwise naturalized borders, who politicized otherwise depoliticized public places, who linked the political struggles, struggles here to the political struggles there. So knowing this, the question is, what do we owe them? Thank you.